Well, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Matins in the Morning. It is Friday, July 26th. It is the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of Mary. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Aletha, and we're coming to you from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the liturgy of the hours. You can find out all about our retreat center and the work that we do over at our website at liturgyofthehours.org. Just have a few page numbers for us today. If you'd like to find these, you can find these in the description below the video as well, along with the prayers that we pray before and after matins. So our opening hymn, our antiphons and psalms, are going to come from the current day of the Psalter, beginning on page 1230. Our first reading and responsory is in the proper of seasons on page 533. And our second reading, responsory, and concluding prayer will be proper for Saints Joachim and Anne, beginning on page 1556. As always, we'll begin with our prayer that we pray in preparation for the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. Amen. Open, O Lord, Lord, my mouth to bless your holy name. name. Cleanse Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my my understanding and and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and and devoutly say this office, and and so so deserve deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty, through Christ Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, in In union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Sing praise to our Creator, O sons of Adam's race. God's children by adoption, baptized into His grace. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity. Holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. To Jesus Christ give glory, God's co-eternal Son. As members of His body, we live in Him as one. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God. Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. Now praise the Holy Spirit, poured forth upon the earth, who sanctifies and guides us, confirmed in our rebirth. Praise the Holy Trinity, Undivided unity, Holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. My God, do Do not not reject reject my cry for help, help, assailed as I I am by the wicked. O God, listen to my prayer, do not hide from my pleading, attend to me and reply. With my cares I cannot rest. I tremble at the shouts of the foe, at the cries of the wicked, for they bring down evil upon me, they assail me with fury. My heart is stricken within me, death's terror is on me, trembling and fear fall upon me, and horror overwhelms me. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, to fly away and be at rest, so I would escape far away and take refuge in the desert. I would hasten to find a shelter, from the raging wind, from the destructive storm, O Lord, and from their plotting tongues. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My God, God, do do not not reject reject my my cry cry for help, help, assailed assailed as I am by the wicked. 
The Lord himself will free us from hostile and treacherous hands. For I can see nothing but violence and strife in the city. Night and day they patrol high on the city walls. It is full of wickedness and evil. It is full of sin. Its streets are never free from tyranny and deceit. If this had been done by an enemy, I could bear his taunts. If a rival had risen against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, my own companion, my intimate friend. How close was the friendship between us. We walked together in harmony in the house of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord Lord himself will will free free us from from hostile and treacherous hands. hands. Entrust your your cares to to the Lord. Lord. He He will will sustain you. you. As for me, I will cry to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will cry and lament. He will deliver my soul in peace in the attack against me. For those who fight me are many, but he hears my voice. God will hear and will humble them, the eternal judge, for they will not amend their ways. They have no fear of God. The traitor has turned against his friends. He has broken his word. His speech is softer than butter but war is in his heart. His words are smoother than oil, but they are naked swords. Entrust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. He will never allow the just man to stumble. But you, O God, will bring them down to the pit of death. Deceitful and bloodthirsty men shall not live half their days. O Lord, I will trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Entrust your cares cares to the the Lord. Lord. He He will will sustain sustain you. you. From the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we have a dwelling provided for us by God, a dweller in the heavens, not made by hands, but to last forever. We groan while we are here, even as we yearn to have our heavenly habitation envelop us. This it will, provided we are clothed and not naked. While we live in our present tent, we groan. We are weighed down because we do not wish to be stripped naked, but rather to have the heavenly dwelling envelop us, so that what is mortal may be absorbed by life. God has fashioned us for this very thing, and has given us the Spirit as a pledge of it. Therefore we continue to be confident. We know that while we dwell in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. I repeat, we are full of confidence, and would much rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. This being so, We make it our aim to please him, whether we are with him or away from him. The lives of all of us are to be revealed before the tribunal of Christ, so that each one may receive his recompense, good or bad, according to his life in the body. Standing in awe of the Lord, we try to persuade men, but what we are is known to God. I hope that it is also known to you in your consciences. We shall not begin to recommend ourselves to you again, but we are giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may have something to say to those who take pride in external appearances and not in what lies in the heart. Indeed, if we are ever caught up out of ourselves, God is the reason, and when we are brought back to our senses, it is for your sakes. The love of Christ impels us who have reached the conviction that since one died for all, all died. He died for the all the, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised up. Because of this, we no longer look on anyone in terms of mere human judgment. If at one time we so regarded Christ, We no longer know him by this standard. This means that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old order has passed away, now all is new. All this has been done by God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. 
I mean that God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's transgressions against them, and that he has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. This makes us ambassadors for Christ, God as it were appealing through us. We implore you in Christ's name, be reconciled to God. For our sakes, God made him who did not know sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the very holiness of God. God reconciled us to himself through Christ, and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for the sake of us all. And he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. From a sermon by St. John Damascene, Bishop. Anne was to be the mother of the Virgin Mother of God, and hence nature did not dare to anticipate the flowering of grace. Thus nature remained sterile until grace produced its fruit. For she who was to be born had to be a firstborn daughter, since she would be the mother of the firstborn of all creation, in whom all things are held together. Joachim and Anne, how blessed a couple! All creation is indebted to you, for at your hands the Creator was offered a gift ex excelling all other gifts, a chaste mother who alone was worthy of him. And so rejoice, Anne, that you were sterile and have not borne children. Break forth into shouts, you who have not given birth. Rejoice, Joachim, because from, you, from your daughter a child is born for us, a son is given us, whose name is messenger of great counsel and universal salvation, mighty God, for this child is God. Joachim and Anne, how blessed and spotless a couple! You will, you will be known by the fruit you have borne, as the Lord says, by their fruits you will know them. The conduct of your life pleased God and was worthy of your daughter. For by the chaste and holy life you led together, you have fashioned a jewel of virginity. She who remained a virgin before, during, and after giving birth, she alone for all time would maintain her virginity in mind and soul as well as in body. Joachim and Anne, how chaste a couple, while safeguarding the chastity prescribed by the law of nature, you achieved with God's help something which transcends nature in giving the world the Virgin Mother of God as your daughter. While leading a devout and holy life in your human nature, you gave birth to a daughter nobler than the angels, whose queen she now is. Girl of utter beauty and delight, daughter of Adam and mother of God, blessed the loins and blessed the womb from which you, you, from which you come. Blessed the arms that carried you, and blessed your parents' lips, which you, which you were allowed to cover with chaste kisses, ever maintaining your virginity. Rejoice in God all the earth. Sing, exalt, and sing hymns. Raise your voice, raise it, and be not afraid. They worshipped God day and night in fasting and in prayer. They looked forward to, to the deliverance of Israel. They prayed that God would come to save his people. They looked forward to the deliverance of Israel. Let us pray. God of our fathers, fathers you gave Saints Joachim and Anne the, the privilege of being the parents of Mary, the mother, mother of your incarnate son. son. May, May their, their prayers help us to attain the, the salvation you have promised to your people. people. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. We'll now conclude with our prayer that we pray following the divine office. To the most holy and undivided Trinity, to the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, to the, the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary, ever virgin, virgin and, and to the, the whole company of the saints, be everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breast which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the, the Son, and, and of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh